the end of my last video, I was heading south on the Dempster Highway after a day north of the Arctic Circle, camped on the tundra with my Jeep and eggshell camper. Now well, that's a beer. It was a once in a lifetime event, sharing a beer with the bears as they munched on berries. Any regrets? Only that I said this. Uh, the camper is mostly doing good. No issues, I have no flat tires. Knock on something, knock on wood. As I drove south, there was a lot more wood to knock on. However, in hindsight, it didn't seem to do much good. Well, no surprise, Dempster Highway, flat tire. Actually, I pumped it up just to see where the leak was. And yeah, there's a hole right there. It's coming off. Changing a flat tire is no big deal as long as you have a place to pull over. However, my spare rim seemed to have a bend in it. There's something just not right. It was almost touching the front of the well here. Rather than risking a wobbly rim, I got out my tire repair kit and plugged the hole in the original tire. I just had to see if it would hold under pressure. Find the holes. The old one seems to be patched. It's the one that's going back in. Ah, finally. I've repaired it, hopefully it's gonna hold. With the flat tire dilemma resolved, I needed to find another camp spot. I did look into the paid campsites, but they were too dark and shaded for solar, so I ended the night at a brighter pull-off by the highway. The next morning was dark and cold, and the windows were really foggy. Although I had been through this area only a few days before, the colors had changed drastically as the fall air was upon Tombstone Park. Fortunately, I found a great boondocking spot right beside the Blackstone River. And my first priority was quite clear. A little windy, but what a view. nice to have a sunny warm day. It's been so cold and gloomy for the last few weeks. I've got to take this moment whenever I can get it. And I haven't even been able to show you my new t-shirt. Canada, true north, strong and free. Canadian spirit. This is the real Canada. Once settled in, I searched for an area to explore.
This is called Two Moose Lake. But today, it could be called Three Duck Lake, as there are no moose in sight. The lakes and ponds looked peaceful. However, I had my eyes on an area of low brush and muskeg. I found a spot with a place to park and a small trail, and off I went. From a distance, it doesn't look that bad. But when you get right into it, it's terrible to try to walk in this. Combination of brush and moss and you can sink right down. Or, even worse, twist an ankle. Despite the difficult walk, it did give me the opportunity to view up close some of the varieties of plant life in such an unforgiving terrain. Once I got to a higher elevation, the trail was a little better defined. My boots are soaking wet. I don't think I'm going to make it to the top, but this is a beautiful view as it is. I don't think I need to go further. It's just so vast. With my curiosity quenched and my stomach growling, it was time to head back to camp for some munchies. I'm slumming it today. Tostitos. Cheese whiz. Now this will probably turn a few stomachs with my road food diet. I do eat healthy most of the time, but do go into junk food relapses for convenience. Please forgive me. You know, with all the roads that I've traveled in the last few years, it's hard to pick a favorite, but there's at least two I think are must-sees. In the U.S., it's the Natchez Trace through Mississippi and Tennessee beautiful lush forest and the road is so smooth you can almost put a glass of champagne on the dash and it would stay there 
And then there's the other extreme, the Dempster Highway through Yukon and Northwest Territories, where I am now. And here, you're lucky if you keep all the fillings in your mouth. It is extreme, but again, the landscape is extreme as well. Lush colors, wildlife. It's so isolated. Beautiful. Those are my top two right now. I'm sure I'm going to update that. Time for one of my gourmet tips. When you're at the very end of your Tostitos and it's only crumbs down there, you take your jar of Cheese Whiz and you pour it in. And you lose a few, but that's okay. I got lots. You can tell them Slim taught you that one. As with all my videos, I hope to inspire people to try it out for themselves. And this series on the Northwest is, uh, has opened my eyes to things I didn't realize were out there. If you want to go extreme, certainly this is the area to be in. Like I'm still on the Dempster Highway and it's hard to get any more extreme than that. You can go all the way to the Arctic Ocean from here, as, as long as regulations and, and all that allow you to. I couldn't, but in some future day, I certainly want to go the, the rest of the way. Now you may ask, well, is that something I can do or, you know, with, with my own trailer? Is there some special needs? Well, I'm not an expert, but I do have opinions, and this is mine. The Dempster is a challenging highway. There's no doubt about it. And it's challenging for so many reasons. First of all, it's a dirt road. And uh, the second one is there's only one gas station after the beginning, and it's 370 kilometers. Now, that may not seem that much on a paved highway, but 370 kilometers on a gravel road going up and down and back and forth and dodging potholes and going through mud it is a challenge it took me i think about six hours to go that distance and yeah that burns up fuel every time your your tires start slipping in the mud that burns up fuel but what kind of rv or camper would i recommend for coming up here well, first of all, let me tell you what I absolutely would not recommend. And that's a big ass motorhome or fifth, fifth wheeler. Now, I know a lot of people have motorhomes and I'm not getting on their case for having them. But up here, I want you to think about one thing. If you're thinking of bringing a big monster, if you're thinking of hauling an entire city behind you, and that is what happens if you get a flat tire or something breaks down there's not there's a lot of places there is nowhere to pull over absolutely nowhere so you would be blocking the entire dempster highway and there's no there's no cell phone coverage here the, you can't even get a radio you would have to flag down a trucker and chances are you'd be in that trucker's way you'd be in everybody's way if you broke down in the middle of the dempster so when you're thinking of what kind of vehicle to bring make sure it's small enough that you can at least get it off the road and other people can get around you now i'm towing a small camper is it ideal well it works for me um the gas guzzling Jeep isn't the greatest because it limited me to, you know, how much exploring I could do because I didn't want to run out of gas. Uh, I also found that when I'm going, you know, like some of the pull-offs and the places you can just boondock off the Dempster Highway are very narrow. So once you get down one, there, there might not be a place to turn around and you've got to back it up which would be a real hassle. And I did that, so I know. A van would be good. Um, 
because chances are you're not going to be going right up in the back roads in, in the mountains. There's not a lot of back trails anyway, but if, you, if you're thinking of a van, make sure you have tires for back roads. Big knobby tires for mud, uh, ice, uh, rocks, and potholes. No, no slick, you know, uh, highway tires. Like, yes, you've got to worry about gas mileage, but you've also got to worry about not getting stuck. A little car and a tent, yes, and I've seen some people do it. Great for gas mileage. Tent might not be a good idea when the winds come, and winds do come up here. This area is known for its gale force winds. So, all in all, I don't think there's the perfect vehicle. As long as you get something that's reasonably compact and fits your needs, I think the best thing I've seen that's more, the most versatile thing on the Dempster Highway is a pickup truck with a camper on the back. I've seen so many of them that works out well. You've got your four-wheel drive, you've got the clearance, and you can sleep in the back. You know, if, if I was to choose, I would go that way. But I saw some things that really scared me. Uh, at one point, I saw a Jeep flipped over in a ditch. Some stuff scattered about. That really concerned me. I tried to pull over. I couldn't. I looked. I didn't see anybody. And I did report it. And, it found, and I found out that it was actually something that happened two days before. But I've seen... Um, you know, vehicles in the side of the road with a, a little uh, sign in their window, property of John Peel and all that, don't steal anything, because these are vehicles that didn't make it. You know, a camper with a half a hub, <laughs> it just cracked off. These things that happened, of course, I had the spare, I had a flat tire. So it's, it's not necessarily inevitable, but it's something you have to prepare yourself for. So please plan ahead of time before enjoying these spectacular views. And appreciate both the truckers and the pit toilets. I didn't photograph other people's misfortune, but I did find some unique relics along the way. These appeared to be the remains of the original construction equipment that built the Dempster Highway starting in 1959. The rusted remains looked like dinosaur bones, the curved spines of a long lost monster that laid down and died in the mossy bog. Forgotten and alone. But these three eyeballs, I just had to poke. They were puffballs, of course. What a beautiful view. Cool, clear stream. Fall colors, sunshine, it's warm. But on the other side, are the impending clouds of doom. Which one will win? I guess I'm going to find out in a few minutes. Of course, the winter, impending clouds of doom. The good news was the rain was helping to wash off the mud from the Dempster Highway, but only to make room for more later on.
The next morning, however, the scene dramatically changed. As much as I'd like to stay, you can see in those mountains, winter has come. And it's actually starting to snow here right now. I'm not prepared for winter, so it's time to go south. I'd love to stay here. I could stay here for weeks. But I think my time has come. Better move on. As I passed through the snow caked, the cloud tipped, and the enchanted mountains of the park, I was a little saddened at how fleeting a glimpse I really got of this truly unique paradise. But to see it at all in these intense times was truly a blessing. So my trailer and my Jeep survived the dumpster. They're not ready for the dumpster. And I made it back to the gas station with a quarter tank to spare. Not bad for my Jeep anyway. My trailer was a mess and would be rewarded for its hard work with a car wash. But the best news is that I made it. I conquered the only public road to the Arctic and would now head west. I hope you enjoyed this video and will continue to follow me on my next adventure.